Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, a few minutes late trying to sort our cameras out. Um, so here we are again. Rest for life. Feels like ages, and it's not. Oh, Actually, it is. We didn't we do it. We missed a oh, month. That's why. Right. Now I don't feel so like brain like. Oh my god, where's time going? We have missed a month. <laughs> yes, we did miss a month. Have we had a nice summer? <laughs> what we remember of summer. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway. Uh, so <laughs> move on today. <laughs> yeah, quickly move on. Um, so today we are doing a creamy chicken and tomato pasta, which is very exciting because this is one of these. Recipes that's really quick, really simple to do, um, and we're comforting. Yeah, comforting. comforting because I think you know pasta, rice, potatoes, potatoes. Particularly as we're coming into a different season, are those foods we tend to grab gravitate to? That and speedy, kind of quick things we know and love. But it's just a couple of swaps that will just make it better for us females. Yeah, which is it, that that was what something that's obviously like you hear the word pasta, and I think we've come to the point where we feel like it's the devil. Um, so this is a really interesting uh, version of pasta that we'll come on to as we get to that point. Um, chicken is uh, chicken thighs, just because they're tastier. Just because they are tastier. Hello, who's God. there? Hi, Lisa. I Lisa, I could see. Uh, yes, it's yes. Lisa. Nice, to, nice to see you, Lisa. Thank you for being here. Uh, so yeah, so we've got chicken thighs, uh, of which we'll uh, start cooking with shortly. We've got tomatoes, courgettes, garlic, shallots, That's shallots, shallots. <laughs> <Every> <laughs> time. Uh, spinach, <laughs> yeah, um, and a tomato puree. So it's a really simple, speedy and recipe. And yogurt. Did you say yogurt? Uh, I'm not sure. Can't anyway, remember. yogurt. <laughs> I'll, I'll say yogurt. yogurt. <laughs> it's your contribution today. <laughs> Uh, oh, and basil. Don't think I mentioned basil. Oh, he's nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice man. <laughs> Can be a bit faulty. <laughs> uh, anyway, so to Spend start, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could go on. Um, anyway, so <laughs> shall we start? Shall we? Shall yes. we? Bring We've got a, a boil. saucepan to the bowl. I always boil a kettle because I don't like waiting for water to boil. You don't like waiting for anything. Quite no, impatient. quite impatient. So we're using penne. <laughs> Tubes yes. to the layman, um, but this is brown rice pasta. So I think that you know I'm not going to. Um, Sorry, hi Sean, I can see you all there too. <laughs> I think it's fair to say. That and Stephanie's there as well. Yeah, hi Stephanie. Too. Sorry, um, I'm not getting words. So I think it's fair to say that we all know that we should be reducing our refined carbohydrates. So those white carbohydrates like white bread, white pasta, white white flour. Um, white rice, those kind of things, because they are heavily processed, but they also have a much bigger impact on our um, insulin levels, um, and they also tend to bloat us a lot more. Um, so whole wheat is kind of where we've been heading, but brown rice pasta, I love the taste and the effect of this because it tastes exactly the same. I can't, I can't, when you eat it, I don't know that I'm not actually eating traditional pasta pasta. No, but the, the thing that doesn't happen, this particular one is gluten free. So if you are slightly sensitive to gluten, um, you're not necessarily gonna get the same side effects as that. For me, it's completely less bloating. It is made with um, rice flour. So, it, but it keeps, because it's classed as minimally processed, it keeps the bran and the germ of the actual, um, the rice, and then it has more fiber in it than other pastas. So it is more filling, therefore you should, you know, in on paper, use less of it. <laughs> but it is still the one thing that I have to measure out. I yes. would naturally yes. go, mm, let's yeah. fill up my bowl. That one thing is always happens is, Pasta is, I have no concept of how much pasta. No. So for this recipe, this is a recipe for two people, is 120 grams okay. of this brown rice, dry, dry weight, yes. <laughs> but this brown rice pasta. Um, so. Uh, it's available in any supermarket. You just have to know, know that you need it, <laughs> know that you want it. Um, there are lots of different brands out there, so. 
brown rice noodles and brown rice pasta is something that I would be looking to switch if you want to kind of have a change from, from whole wheat. I find whole wheat quite heavy. I find this much lighter. Do you like waiting for anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, she doesn't. She's very impatient. Stephanie, hello ladies. Just jumped on me off a meeting to come and uh, Aww, nice to see thanks. you. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, hi, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> hi, Catherine, and hi, Carol, as well. Yeah, I hope you're all okay. So, right, pasta going in to boiling water, and that needs less time than normal pasta as well. It's a, seven to eight minutes, but I'd probably do the seven. Would you do the seven? I tend well, to because you're impatient. <laughs> <laughs> right, so seven minutes from now, um, it, the pasta's ready. Stock cube. Stock cube. Um, Dissolved. Half a stock cube it actually is, but I always put a whole one in because I don't know why you bother with half. I always want to know what I do with the other half. Exactly, that's why. That's why I always put a whole one in, despite the recipe that's saying half. I don't think it's going to do any harm. Now this is actually chicken stock, uh, but I... You could use vegetable use stock if you, want. You, um, if you would rather. 150 millilitres of boiling water and supposedly half, half a chicken stock, but the whole thing's going in right now. Um, I've just been learning about how to make stock just because I, as I said, I'm, or you may have seen on other posts, I'm doing a um, nutrition uh, cookery course. So it's about cooking for well-being, obviously based on obviously what Emma's already taught me and everything. And this is about more the cookery side so that we can actually create so some more. you can do the chopping. <laughs> so yeah, so I don't have to have a, quick. A, a fast chopper. <laughs> um, and we've got new knives today, so if oh, Emma suddenly really needs really good. <laughs> if Emma suddenly needs uh, assistance, it's because we've got new knives. Oh, really <laughs> We're not used to knives that actually cut in this kitchen, no. are we? Anyway, so um, yeah, so I, I've been I've started this cookery course. It frightens me to death. It's basically going to take me probably about six months to do. It's all online, um, and uh, the first thing I've got to do is after the knife skills, hence is having new knives because I couldn't pretend that I could do what I was supposed to do. Hacking with skills. <laughs> you were hacking <laughs> skills. The, also, this weekend, I've now got to make a, a, a chicken stock, and the amount of time it makes to make a chicken stock, I'm just like, thank goodness. It, it will be epic, and it will be fantastic to drink, and it will I'm, be full of collagen it's all that, and the minerals and all of that. Yeah. So, so you do yeah, think, thank goodness for the convenience of just crumbling a stock cube in, but as you said, actually to make it from but you nothing, I'm actually making it from this one from chicken carcass and veal carcass bones. But you will make lots and, and you can bread. freeze it and you can... Yeah, but the reducing, so it's about, it's going to take me about five to six hours and that's literally just taken seconds. <laughs> Here's my point. <laughs> but yes, so you never know, I might be... Slightly more qualified, slightly more qualified than a Swedish chef version of myself. <laughs> um, yes, don't use a big knife on such a yeah. thing. Um, right, so I've done the I've done the stock. I'm now going to heat a medium frying pan, a medium that was with the chicken, uh, to uh, start cooking the chicken. So a teaspoon. I'm of... very in love with the knives. <laughs> oh, are you? Yes. Uh, so a teaspoon of olive oil going in there. Again, as we said before. Um, you don't actually need that much fat going into the pan and olive oil is a better oil because it doesn't change its molecular structure once heated so you are getting um, really good healthy fats that stay as good healthy fats when you re when you heat vegetable oils seed oils um, they change the molecular structure and they become more of a trans fat which is very toxic for us so do be careful when you're using the spray oils, and um, even the olive oil ones. Just check that all that's in there is olive oil. Olive oil doesn't really like plastic. A lot of the time, those spray oils are in, are in plastic. So what I would do is, I understand why people want to spray because they want to use less, but get yourself a glass, invest in the glass spray and decant. If it's all uh, a little bit high maintenance, it wants glass and it wants to be kept. A bit needy, yeah. yeah. It must be kept out of direct sunlight. Like all of that, yeah. So when we have it, that's why, you know, when you see um, the, 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 the pottery that olive oil is in on holiday and stuff, it's always in quite thick pottery. It's never in historically. Yes, okay. Could you pass me the chicken, please? In all the bars. <laughs> yes, in all the bars. So 300 grams of chicken. Um, I've actually had this diced just to save us some... 
Ooh, sizzle, sizzle. It's a nice embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> you have to change the nice embarrassment, which actually I don't have today. So as you can see, diced chicken. Um, something we were just talking about is uh, using turkey more frequently as well. Um, I know you have. Not just for Christmas. It's not, no. I'm, I'm the, I know you do more frequently and you're, sort of in, you're encouraging me to as well. It's leaner, it's a leaner meat. And the chicken is lean as well. But turkey is slightly leaner, isn't it? So if you wanted to get a slightly leaner protein, then that's what um, would be good. And I think that, you know, we are, you know, we cremate it to death, don't we, at Christmas? And I think everybody thinks, oh, turkey's really dry. Yeah, but it's not. Oh, hi, Ali. Uh, can you remind me what you're cooking, please? That's Sean. We're cooking a. <laughs> I'm not joking on this. We're cooking a um, creamy, creamy chicken and tomato pasta uh, with basil. Um, whoever he is. Thank you very much. We do. We've only got one too. Yeah. I want to use it twice now. And um, and then Stephanie. Uh, oh, I use a lot of rapeseed oil, so could you just tell us a bit more about rapeseed rape oil? Rapeseed oil for cooking? I probably wouldn't, um, just because it is a seed oil. Um, with rapeseed oil, you need to just make sure that it's um, it, how it's pressed. So the cold pressed versions are normally better. And with rapeseed, I would tend to use it more as a flavouring as the dishes uh, cool down. Uh, a bit like I would uh, a nut oil, like walnut oil or sesame oil. Um, avocado oil isn't, isn't too bad, but I'd be, I'd, if it's something that you're using to roast or to cook in this way, I would use olive oil for that and, and kind of use your rapeseed oil sparingly. Um, I can answer that in more detail if there's maybe a reason why you're using rapeseed oil. Yes, cold press, only minimal. Yeah. yeah. Ali, what have you got? Uh, currently looking at your faces on my screen too. Ah, <laughs> the yeah. Editing off, but we had a photo shoot yesterday with Ali Ford, um, who's a, an ace photographer that um, we've used for a while. Just so we have more faces. So we don't always look like this in the kitchen. <laughs> and we look a little bit better sometimes. Um, so, so yeah, so we did, we did some uh, promo stuff in order, in, in, for um, Recipe Live and also Emma being a personal trainer as well. We've done some photos for that. Um, so, um, yeah, we had an exciting afternoon, didn't we? Yeah, I'm very liking the lines. But I'm just a bit, a bit overwhelmed by the knives. Watch your fingers, don't get so well and so giddy and it all goes wrong. Extra protein. We're really not used to sharp knives. I've even got a knife sharpener and I've got I'm like learning the skills to use oh, the, the, oh, the real one. The real one. Yeah. We're learning all the chef skills. So, you know, I might even get a chef hat on there. Or a chef hat. Yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, I think that pasta. Might have had its minutes. Yeah, so the chicken's gone in for three or four minutes until it's kind of uh, just kind of seared, I guess. And then we can set it aside and do the other bits. And then. Uh, oh, I always could leave it in. I always leave it a little bit in. The, the meat does keep cooking though, so just it's like it's a muscle at the end of the day. So when we rest meat, it's not because it's tired. <laughs> it does keep cooking, and whilst we're very nervous, and fish as well, but when we're really nervous about chicken, we wouldn't hesitate if that was beef no, or lamb no. to take it out now. And then we kind of go, mm, chicken's overdone. Yeah, <laughs> so I, 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 make sure it's seared on the outside. We will leave it in a little bit longer. Well, I, we're not I, chef shit. We're not chef shit. We haven't got a I, perfect I, thermometer thing. No, I, would, I always just leave it in, and I think we just carry on leaving it in. Okay. Because, well, because. the less complicated we make things, the, the, the better Yeah, I is. don't, I'm not a fan of taking things out and then having to use another pan and then having to wipe a pan down and ultimately... Oh, please get a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to, aren't I? Yes. Is it, is it when you go on 
Is it when you go like and stay in like all inclusives or be on cruise ships and things? The more senior, <laughs> the more senior the chef is, the higher the hat that, goes. Apparently. So actually, like you won't be able to see my hat. <laughs> You'll make sure I've got a senior hat. <laughs> Big sticker and everything. Yeah. So chicken is seared and sealed and browned. We're gonna. The pasta is now done, so I'm just gonna turn that off. I drain mine and always run it under cold water so it does stop cooking. And right, I'm going to do that immediately. Except I can't find the sieve. It's the one with the horn in it. Like Liza's bucket. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's a song you never hear anymore. Gosh, no. how random is that? And I wonder why, <gasps> why no one sings about... Doesn't anyone else just love the smell of basil? I love the smell of basil. Yes. I really like the smell of basil. <laughs> right. Those means a bit prickly. So anyway, yeah. um, we've done the chicken. We seasoned it. No, we need to season it with some salt and pepper. And then Emma has been quietly slicing the courgettes. Not, not so quiet. Not that quiet. She was enjoying the knife too much. Quieter than normal. Oh, that does smell amazing. This basil. <laughs> Yeah. It's not tick I had a spring onion up your nose. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we it's need to no when we slice the courgette into one centimeter thick discs. Ta da! Finely dice the shallot, which is Ta -da. one shallot. Like QVC. It is finely chop or crush the garlic. I haven't done that yet. The I'm garlic cloves. Well, you're not doing the garlic. Yeah, I've done okay, the three garlic. I normally wait till I've done it in. Okay, three garlic cloves, and now we're going to then add everything to the chicken pan. So tomatoes. Well, it doesn't actually say tomatoes at this point. Okay. It says courgettes. I've done of that, and then it says a bit of add the tomatoes. After two or three minutes. The garlic. So <laughs> them. Yeah. Oh, but after two or three minutes, yeah, right. you add. So you do your garlic and your shallot okay. and courgette for two okay. three minutes. And you do the shallot, <laughs> shallot, garlic. We'll just have a domestic. <laughs> <laughs> About when we're adding what? Order, order. That's Betty Boothroyd, wasn't it? Do you remember yeah. um, Oh, that's a tough one. So yeah, so we're adding one courgette. We're adding one shallot and three garlic cloves. Good job, you've got muscles. You can see they're fighting with that garlic. <laughs> ah, win. <laughs> um, so, all going in the pan for two to three minutes. Then we're going to add the tomatoes. Which Emma will add the tomatoes because she's so desperate to put them in the pan. <laughs> um, I think it's because I like my tomatoes really mushy. I'll probably put mine in. Well, we can put them in a sec, can't we? I know, just put them in. When, when it says, because we're supposed to be doing a professional recipe, <laughs> apparently. No one said it was professional. I never, I never said that. Um, so, so we have chicken, garlic, shallots. All in the pan, all cooking away. Courgette. In a second, we're then going to add. Um, you could always use a tofu or a tempeh if you are vegetarian or vegan. Yeah, we're going to add 120 grams of halved um, cherry vine tomatoes in a second. Um, you need to get what they like. I was sort of what I was going to say cherry something tomatoes. brandy. <laughs> yeah, cherry brandy. New. Um, so, do you want to add the tomatoes? I bet you feel better now. Oh, I was busy chopping again. Yes, Cherry tomatoes do. going in. Cherry tomatoes going in. And tomato puree is going to go in. So that's two tablespoons of, of, um, of, um, puree. Tomato puree. It was only seconds ago I said the word, wasn't it? Worrying, isn't it? Menopausal brains. Busy brains, I like to just call it. <laughs> <laughs> Some, ooh, oh, she shook up. It did. <laughs> Didn't realise it was almost there, ready. <laughs> I need to open a new one. Oh, I just took that in then. The smart is not going to do us too much harm, is it? Yep. 
go slightly over. There we go. Okay. So, and also chili flakes to taste. Now, this is all down to taste. Emma likes it hot. Which we've got on. <laughs> Always been told, she's got no taste. Um, so, happily share. So, the recommended is half a teaspoon, which I would probably personally stick to, but I bet you'd up level to one, would you? Normally, but it's okay today. I can always add some more on the top when we finish. You can always add. You can't take away. That's but true yeah, just story. Do, do you, do what so, you want. so half, half a teaspoon of chili flakes has just gone in there. Um, I'm just going to mix it all and cook it again for two to three minutes, and then we're going to add the chicken stock. Oh, very excited, but look how lovely this is looking already. Mm -hmm. And you can see that this already looks like comfort food, it looks like there's plenty of it, it just feels yeah, that's the nourishing really and fills, fills the bowl. Yeah, and it is nourishing. So, the protein from the chicken, chicken is an amazing source of protein. Women are notoriously poor at eating protein, and we need it, it's our building block for life. It helps with muscle repair, it helps with cellular function it helps us grow and keep feeling strong and whilst we think we finished growing <laughs> our cells haven't so we need to keep replenishing and protein is is what does that so uh, chicken is a great source of uh, of protein obviously we've got uh, courgette and tomatoes uh, shallots and spinach as our as our vegetables and garlic so and garlic so we've got lots of vitamins and minerals then various vitamins and minerals in there along with fiber and then we're adding extra fiber with our brown rice pasta and no refined sugars so blood sugar should stay nice and stable and you should stay fuller for longer because that's what protein and fiber do and there's fat, but there's not too much fat in it as well. The as fat has pretty much just come from the olive oil, to be honest. So it's a good, healthy a omega fat. fat yeah. And dietary fat in the chicken. But again, you know, the natural animal fats are the fats that we shouldn't fear. Um, right, I'm putting uh, chicken stock in now. And then this is all just going to bubble away for a little bit. Um, and reduce. Um, for maybe sort of another eight to ten minutes. Um, the other thing with brown rice pasta is it also contains extra minerals like magnesium and selenium. Magnesium particularly is helpful for um, for females in terms of our mood and our cognitive function. Um, and uh, the other thing that the brown rice pasta has because of the fibre is it really helps with our vitamin B uptake, um, which again helps in perimenopause, menopause and beyond. Because um, when I talk about the menopause, I'm talking about the whole of the second chapter. So I'm talk talking about kind of from 40, 45 until the end. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the last few uh, additions to, to this are going to be basil, spinach and yogurt. Um, now it does recommend in this recipe that we add almond yogurt, which obviously is a uh, is a nut. Um, would you know why we would recommend almond yogurt over natural yogurt? That I so is it just for flavouring? You think? No, it's not for flavouring really. It um, there'll be less um, fat, um, saturated fat in a plant-based yogurt. So a dairy-based yogurt will just have more saturated fat in there. Um, the almond yogurt is maybe going to have a little bit more protein, but I think that will be negligible. Um, it's it's really about the saturated fat content, really, um, in, from from my my point of view, um, and and the overall carbohydrate um, content too. So it makes very little very little difference. I think if you are obviously if you're veg uh, if you're vegan, then that's when you'd use the the almond. Almond yogurt. I use almond yogurt. You can get it from most supermarkets now. Um, I find it slightly thinner than, say, a a plain yogurt. But again, I substitute depending on what I've got in. Um, but no, I think the the almond yogurt. So it's a bit like um, coconut oil. Really, it's a bit. In my head, it doesn't taste. It's quite. It's quite an odourless 
odourless taste really. Obviously if you've got a nut allergy, <laughs> you'd use something different. Yes, well so today we do have the uh, cow version <laughs> yeah. of the yoghurt, rather than nut version. This particular one though does have a high protein content, um, but it also has a higher fat content. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's beg, borrow and, you know, yin and yang balance. Yeah, um, so this is looking very delicious in the pan. Um, making me want to eat it right now. Um, I suggest that we probably don't need to go all the way to eight minutes. No, I don't think we need to do it. Because um, the chicken is definitely cooked. The tomatoes, you'll be pleased to know, are squashable. Hi, Jackie. Oh, hi, Jackie. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Um, so um, I think we might be ready to start adding other ingredients. So, um, we add the penny pasta here. We've got loads of names, don't we? Rose meat, pasta, penny. <laughs> <laughs> All um, of a sudden, the pasta looks more. Yeah, and this dish looks massive. I actually think that this dish now looks massive for two of us. I think that it? one of the key things to pasta, and I never used to do this, as I always used to dish up the pasta and then put my sauce on top. And I think if you look at Italian chefs, they often add the pasta to yeah. the sauce. And I think it makes it look far more substantial. And actually, you know, we really have had um, what we need. Um, so um, we've added the pasta. Um, we now need to add spinach, yogurt and half the basil. Um, so spinach is about 40 grams. I haven't got a clue, we didn't measure it. Um, but I haven't we, got no I, wrong with spinach. I was going to say, you know, if you... Yeah, we, I would always add more spinach and it for us at home, if I'm particularly hungry, then I would add a side of broccoli or maybe a side of kale, but another side of a dark green leafy veg where it's full of fiber, um, not gonna impact anything whatsoever, but it's giving me, my gut, my body, some extra nourishment without any of any other consequences really. Yeah. Yeah, shall we do? Um, it says 80 grams. I've chopped the basil and we'll add half. Give us the decor. 80 grams. 80 grams. How much is, how much is in there? 150. 150 so. uh, <laughs> Just less than uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quick maths. Get off. <laughs> Mm, so this is going really cleanly now. Smells amazing. Sorry we don't have smell vision. I really want to use my finger. I'm going to use my finger. I don't want to miss out. Um, oh, did that accent go in your mouth then? It slipped in. <laughs> um, so, I'm just stirring all of that in. And it, the yoghurt obviously makes it very creamy. And obviously we've got the amazing flavours yeah, of the basil. You don't have to use that much yoghurt, to be honest. It's, 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 it is a quite a personal choice. So if you're not a creamy a creamy person, then you may not even want to even add the yoghurt. A creamy person. You might just want to keep it as it is. It can be. It can just do as is. So if you've got people in your household that don't... Oh, um, there's a stray piece of past... Oh, I'm I impressed. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> I've got more I want for a split second. Very impressed. Right, so that is literally it. So you can see how quick it is, how even for us, even for us, um, how obviously amazing this looks. Uh, obviously, Emma's gone through all the uh, nutritious and delicious ingredients, and like literally now, I'm going to plate this up for the two of us. We've got a massive lunch. Woohoo! Um, so I just plate it up, and then you can see um, the final. Piece. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. Which is with a little bit of basil garnish. Okay, why I did that. I definitely need a big chef hat. <laughs> you definitely need a big chef Right, so that is literally it. How amazing is that? Oh, and how okay. exciting is that? So that is our creamy tomato pasta penne with courgettes, tomatoes. Uh, and spinach. And a nice autumn warmer, for sure. Um, so, uh, we are back on the 11th of October. What does Thanks, Stephanie? I can't, I can't Looks lovely. 
So, okay, Emma's coming round. We need to probably need to wear our binoculars. <laughs> Hi. It looks lovely. Hope it tastes as nice as it looks. Nice doesn't work well to go with it. Lol. Yeah, lol. <laughs> Um, yeah, so thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Uh, as you, could ever. White, you could add the white wine to it because the alcohol burned us off. So if you do want that, you could do that. But yeah, we'll save white wine for uh, tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, 11th of October, we're back. Can't remember what we're doing. I don't know if we decide what we're doing. But it'll be more, more nutritious and delicious. For the season. So yeah, nourishing to flourish. With my time for change, which you haven't mentioned. I haven't mentioned my time for change. Do you want to know a little bit more? <laughs> no, my time for change is the online nutrition and wellbeing uh, program I created for, for females around nine years ago. And this is the kind of stuff that, that, that I eat and helps me and has helped me navigate my way through my own uh, last decade and the future but I'm currently in the middle of a five week program but if you want to join me I have one more program through uh, through to the end of the year that will start just after half term so I will put some stuff in here I actually don't put much stuff in the group about it and um, but it is going to be starting and it will take us right up until the middle of December so that we can feel at the busy time of the year when it's stressful and when the the months go colder and we want to kind of hibernate and have that layer of padding we must remember we are not hedgehogs <laughs> and we don't all bears and we don't need to hibernate and fill and fill and fill and fill because we don't sleep all winter, sadly. Yeah, <laughs> we like actually want to wake up in January and go, oh, no, no, what have I done? So, yeah, it just keeps us um, mentally, keeps us, mentally yeah, sharp. Flourishing. Uh, mentally sharp, our gut health in good nick, our immunity top notch, our resilience and our ability to just handle what life's going to throw us yeah. over these next uh, few months. Um, just to be to be stronger and fitter and fitter physically, mentally and emotionally. Yeah. So awesome. So yeah, thank you for being here. Rescue life in the bag for September. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye. Oh, you're in charge of stopping. <laughs> <laughs>